We're here at Sports Club Florida, and listen to Low. You at the Florida Citrus Sport High School football meet today. We're here with David Kenta, head coach of Maribel High School. David, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me here. Oh, man, I'm glad you guys came. Brought the players over from Melbourne. It's excited to have you guys here at the meet today. It gets no better than this. Uh, we just talked about the experience that you guys get, and you giving them that experience by bringing them over here. What was the, the mindset of your players coming over to the meet today today? They weren't sure, and I, I got young guys that are just coming together as a team, and I don't think they were really sure what we are doing for media. And because we had done a similar thing on Picture Day uh, last year at our own place, they were like, is everybody going or not? No, we're just taking a few, and this is what we do. I wanted them to understand what it's like. If you really want to play at the next level, you've got to be able to speak, come forward, advocate for yourself. The rest of us are going to support you. And take these off. That's all get it all covered, man. Get right. it, but make sure we got that down and make sure we have it covered. Uh, these kids are, are great kids, and they're coming together as a great team. And I wanted them to understand that being able to portray yourself for who you really are is a big deal. Because as you go on and talk to college coaches, they see the social media. They see what's out there. They see what's going on. Can you handle yourself in a public arena the proper way? Exactly. That's so experience all is, is so important for them when they come into media days or just come together as a team and work together. I even like the fact they get a chance to network with other players from other teams, too, that's in, in there. Like, they, oh, that's such and such. Oh, I know him. Yep. You never know. What if he go to college to Alabama and he by the only one there and he lost and all of a sudden here come the, uh, the kid from, from Coco that walked up in there and like, oh, there go Joshua. There go such and now I feel a little more comfortable. Right. And that's what we have to get to, getting our athletes to be in the right setting around the right people that want what they want. Exactly. Right there. So, Coach, yeah. let's talk about it now. You're right now head coach at Melbourne. How long have you been a head coach? This is going into my fourth year. Fourth year. Last year, what, how did we do last year? We were struggling last year because we were so young. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't struggle because of uh, anything other than experience. Uh, I kept trying to explain to them how good they really were, and we had to build that confidence and get that team unity to come together. I think they've done a fantastic job in our spring game. If it wasn't for turnovers, they would have just – uh, they would have demoralized the two teams we played, but they turned the ball over too many times. Mm -hmm. You take away that with what we had done last year, they're completely coming together and completely turned it around. Right. So, but they have something to build on coming into the upcoming season. Absolutely. But you can build on that, but still, there's some things we have to do to get to another level off season. I'm asking each coach about that all season training, all season uh, grind, the all season mentality. What is the all season mentality here at Maryland High School? At Melbourne, what we did this year, and we do it every summer, we actually work out four days a week. And we have it all set so that it's all good to go there. We actually gave them the week off after graduation or after they finished school. They had a week off, and we started the first week of June. We started with the workouts, getting there, and we give them a week, week in the middle, 4th of July week. We'll take off, go have family time, do your thing, enjoy. Uh, I'm really big with history and everything else anyway. 4th of July is the time to celebrate the country. So when we go through and do all this, then we come right back. Then those last few weeks, is tacking it off and we just maxed out last week so we basically have it all work out all conditioning all at the time of day when we plan on practicing so basically the conditioning and the running and everything falls in the line and we have continuity that goes all the way into where we're going to play uh, we pushed them, we got them, and what I really liked about this group of young men was they showed that they came together. Uh, they started holding each other accountable. They started coming on for each other. It wasn't us coaches pushing them as much as it was them starting to bring each other in and make it happen, and that's where I see a successful team coming out of these hard workouts. We let them say hard work equal fun, but ain't no fun in losing. Yep. So the hard work keep you from losing, hard work help you win. Absolutely. Right? And, and, and that's why we look at a lot of different programs when they come in. Are they dealt Develop? Are they working hard? Or they just want to win? When you think of getting kids prepared for the next level, is that just winning or developing? For me, it's developing. What happens is, okay, we all want to win or we wouldn't be doing this. Winning is the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. But when you do the little things right and you develop and execute and learn from your mistakes, not failures, mistakes, correct your mistakes. There is no such thing as a failure in that respect. If I failed at something, I just made the mistake. And in football, we can correct that. We can go in and teach it the steps, how to get there, be the aggressiveness. If you are perfectly right 100% of the time and the guy across from you beat you, shake his hand because you were right and he's just a better athlete. You can't do anything about that. <laughs> Better than that. 
So when you look at that and realize when I make a mistake, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to correct it. And us as coaches, it's critical that we actually make those corrections and teach the right way. Because as we do that and go forward, those little steps make us so successful and they start to see it. They start to see the more continuity. They start to see how everything rolls. And all of a sudden, they're now telling you, hey, coach, but he's doing this on the field. You can't see it from over here. Mm. That's when you know you've got your player playing the game, and you're just going to say, here's the scheme, go to work. And go get them from there. Exactly. Right, man? So you, they, they develop and develop, develop, and we talk about that. Because a lot of programs want that instant gratification. Like, let me get the best guy, bring him in. I want guys to come in and help us, you know, do well. But at the same time, you know, every program not going to be able to get the best guys in. So that of gratification not going to happen we got to develop we have to coach we have to prepare and not only that if we coach prepare and develop when they go to college they are more comfortable they're not struggling as much correct because i have seen the difference I mean, I've been doing it for a long time, and I've seen top players go up there and couldn't adapt to time management, couldn't uh, uh, adapt to uh, going against top dogs every single day. But this goes back a long way because I'm old. Mm -hmm. Okay, my philosophy and the way I think about things. Okay, I went to the University of Miami, recruited by Howard Schnellenberger, won the national championship. I played for Jimmy Johnson at University of Miami, and we go through all this. And what happens with the development was you have the guy that learns what to do, how to take the steps, how to put in the effort, the effort, the effort again, because you have to go full speed all the time and make it happen. When you do this and develop those little steps and go on, I was fortunate my freshman year to have been one of the seven out of my freshman class that played, mm. didn't get redshirted, and won the national championship with the University of Miami. When you go in and do that, and I did it as a freshman, it was nothing more because the coaches I had in high school taught me the little things and how to do it right. So when I got to college and coach said, well, do this, and stood back and looked at you like he's going to drop, and you did it right. I was taught right from coaches I had in high school, and I earned the job in college because of that. And it's nothing more than that because I was not better than the other guys on the team. It was because I knew where to be, when to be there, and how to be there from the coaches that taught me in high school. And I give them that ton of credit. Uh, uh, my offensive coordinator, my senior year, passed away last year, and I went to the funeral. His family looked at me like, and I'm like, no, man, he was awesome. He helped me develop and get to where I did in football. You get, that's just a respect that has to be there. And I know that your, your players are loving this right here. I mean, I can tell the way your passion, you give it to me. I know, you, <laughs> I know that energy is rolling right off to them. They're hearing it. They're listening to it. I hope and, so. And, and, right, and, and, and I hope so, too. And they're like, hmm, yeah, this is it. I can do it. I can do this right here because you did it and you instilled it. it to them and they take them to the next level. So with that being said, I got one of your players sitting right here and coach, I tell you, he looked like he ready too. He is. <laughs> so he's tell, a great kid. Tell, tell me about this, this young man right Tyler here. Tyler is playing middle linebacker for us right here. He's, okay. one, he's one of our top GPA kids in the school. He's smart. He loves the game and he's a student of the game, not just a player. Mm. What he does is he loves what goes on. He takes what coach teaches him and he applies it. He writes his reads. He does what he's got to. And um, he is one of those guys like we've had at Melbourne High School for a long time that is going to be 135 tackles last year. And so when you go in and you do this and you have the whole thing set up (laughs) as it goes through, he's going to continue that and he's only going to be a junior this year. Wow. So as we go through and do this and where he develops and he goes is all in his control. It's about that effort, that performance, and Tyler has got it all going for him. What position you played at Miami? I was a wide receiver. I was in the same core with Michael Irvin, all right. Ryan Blades, uh, yeah, I know. Brett Perriman. So that's why you and Hurley Brown are so good at friends, huh? Hurley came in right after I did, but he was at Merritt Island. I went from Satellite. <laughs> we both went from Brevard <laughs> County Schools. <laughs> all so, right. Yeah. All right, come on in, Tyler. Thank, thank you, Coach. Thank you very much for doing this. <laughs> hey, yo, <no> doubt. <laughs> I'm Tyler. What's your name, Coach? Uh, Coach Lowe. Coach Lowe? Yeah. That's yeah, me, yeah, Coach Lowe. All right. We good right there? Yes, sir. Tyler. Coach, just said a lot of great things about you right now. Linebacker, one of the most prestigious positions on the field. I'm a good friend of Ray Lewis, and y'all always talk about it. That's the man in the middle. Tell me, why linebacker and what's your mindset when you leading that team out there every Friday night? See, like Coach said and emphasized on, is I'm a very smart kid. I will go through all my reads and put myself and my team in the best position. I'll be able to adjust and call audibles to put my D-line. If I identify something on film, I'm putting my D-line in the best position to go there and make plays. Um, 
I've always been a leader. I've always loved to lead, and I just feel like this linebacker helps me have a strong foundation to be the captain of the defense and just build a camaraderie with my teammates just so we all are on the same page. We all react the same. We all know what to do. And when we're on our lowest point, that's where linebacker comes in. You're the leader on the field. You bring everyone up, and that's personally why I love that position. Well, I tell you, that's a that's a mean position right there. You know, yes. taking uh, taking pride or controlling and running the defense itself, it takes a lot, right? Because you know, yes, they sir. say the safety is the man, but I think he just back there to tie his shoe. We talking about the man in the middle, and that what they represent with you, tied right there. Yes, and here's the things about him: you you're you're a junior. Yes, sir. I'm still young. And had 135 tackles in one year. Sophomore year, yes, sir. Wow, that's Man. huge. I mean, when Coach said that, my eyes perked up because most guys that can make that many tackles, I don't know what's going on. You flying around the field. Yes. They like they say, fly around and practice, fly around in the game. Yes. I mean, that's a lot of work. You know, and, and because of how smart you are and what you were just telling him, that gave you that edge on that field, right? Yes. How you feel about that, man? 135 tackles. Wow. See, I was... I'm hungry. I'm ready to tackle. I mean, I practice like you play. It's an old saying, but it's really true. You practice like you play, and I'm just always hungry to go out and just compete and just enjoy the game of football. I mean, football is a fun sport. It builds you and develops you as a character, and I just love being out there. But for this season, I'm emphasizing even go for more tackles, a little more pass deflections, get some picks in there, maybe take one to the house. Man, ah, that's 135, how you going to outdo 135? They're they waiting on you this time. They, listen, if you had 135 tackle, I'm telling you right now, when I play you the next year, I'm going to double team you, triple team you, come down the backside. Ain't no way in the world you're going to make that bit of tackle. How you going to overcome that this year? Overcome that. So I've been <laughs> I've been working on getting off blocks. I've been getting in the weight room, getting off blocks. But, I mean, you can come double team me, but I'm still going to get tackled. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> You have to see that that's legit because our defense is on the field for almost 500 places. Exactly. So yes, I'm just trying to tell you, it's going to be, yes, it, it gonna be interesting and this I've year. And I've had some big boys double team me. It's definitely been a challenge, but we got through it. <laughs> All right, man. Look, thank you for coming on the yes, show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hand on the game. We are not playing the same. No, we not looking to change. Hand on the road. They think we lacking the drive. Boy, you should stay in your lane. Put on the gas. I do not care if I crash. As long as I stick to the plan.